dirt bike washing and prep pro tips for you from Elevate Action Sports. Hey, Jay here, Dirt Bike TV, and for Elevate today, we're gonna give you some tips on washing your bike. This is one of the most common things that guys do after riding, um, and maybe some guys don't do it enough, but there's a lot of things that you can do to help protect your bike long-term, and we're gonna show you how to do it right now. Okay, so first of all, we use a power washer, a high pressure power washer. Some people like to use a light pressure electric one because it's less pressure. Um, the higher pressure one, I feel like you're washing the bike for less time. So there's less water getting into all your bearings and seals, less time of that, you can wash it quicker and less time. So however you wanna use that theory, we use a high pressure 2500 or above PSI pressure washer and get in there and blast it. Um, before we go out to wash, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, we have scrubbing bubbles. We'll take some, a cleaner out there, a scrubber when we wash. Um, so we have some lube ready and compressed air. You wanna have that ready to go so when you get in the shop, you can blow your bike off. We'll talk about that. Uh, air filter block off. If you wanna take your seats off and block off your air filter, then you risk getting no water into the engine. Also, you don't get as much water into your seat. So believe it or not, your seats take on a lot of water when you wash. So you wanna be careful. When we wash bikes, we tend not to blast the seat a lot because the seams anywhere in the seat are gonna let water in. So we'll scrub them a little bit and just quickly wash them and then blow them off when we get inside and then let them sit out in the sun if it's warm enough. And when we're doing air filters, those kind of things in our bike maintenance and let them dry out. So that's a tip on the seats. So now, before we start, I like to tape up and all bikes are a little different where the air intakes are. On these Yamahas, it's right back here. Can I move this over? So the air actually comes in back here, is the main inlet. And you can get tape like this. This one's a little too short. So you can get tape, block off a little bit of your air intake. And I just put it on lightly so it doesn't leave a bunch of residue. Just something like that will let less air come in if you don't have a block off plate for your air filter. That's a good way to help cut down on the number amount of air coming in. So I'll just peel that off when I'm done. And then might, there might be a little dirt or mud here. I'll wipe it off with a rag. And then if you don't have a plug for the exhaust, you can simply put a piece of tape right over the exhaust, just like that. If there's a little dirt or oil residue there, you can wipe it off before you put it on, just like so. So we try to tape up like this on both sides of the bike and make sure that the exhaust plug is in. So this is gonna cut down any water getting into the bike. There's still little seams around here, so you don't wanna be blasting into these areas. And you wanna be careful of where you blast your water. So you don't wanna be blasting on your chain so much. You just wanna barely hit this stuff. You don't wanna be getting a lot of water into, those, into the, the rollers. Also, all your pivot points, you just wanna do quick passes by on all your pivot points of your uh, suspension. Up here, you don't wanna be blasting away at your steering stem constantly and letting a lot of water get in there. With our four strokes, we have a nice FMF exhaust plug, which goes right in. And on this Honda, we've taped off where its air let, inlet is. And most bikes are all different. This one's right here on the Honda. I'll pull it off and you can see, and this goes right into the air box. So this will stop a lot of air from going in there if you don't have one of those block off plates to block off your, your motor. So that's how I do it on there. And on a KTM, again, it's a little different as well. And their air comes in from the side right here, just like so. So we'll put a little tape on here. We'll stop air from coming into this. We'll stop water from shooting in here, just like this. Just, just throwing a piece of tape on there like that. Pretty simple, quick little deal before you go out to wash. Okay, so look at like the Scotch-Brite pads. We'll use anything like this as our scrubber that I talked about when we're actually washing the bike. A six-in-one type lube or an oily lube. WD-40 does work, but there are some better ones out there. This one I'm not totally happy with, but it does okay. Got a good deal on a bunch of these at one time. So um, the first thing I would do is bring the bike in and with some towels, start drying it off. So I dry it off and as I'm drying it off, I have my compressed air. And with the compressed air, I'm looking for all the key areas that I don't ever want to get, like would be here, the, the steering stem top and lower steering stem. I'm just trying to squirt all the water out of here. And so I'm gonna hit top and bottom steering stem. I'm gonna hit both brake and uh, clutch areas. I'm gonna shoot all the water out of these as I'm drying off. So I'm gonna hit those. Down at the front wheel, I'm gonna do both sides of the front, lower front wheel down there where the wheel, bearing, wheel bearings meet on the brake side. And then come to the rear and do the same right here, both, both axles. 
and I'm gonna blow off the chain as it's spinning. I'll blow the chain off with air. I'm gonna hit both foot pegs right here at the pivots and shoot inside the pins of the foot pegs and shoot those out. Now in this two stroke, for instance, I want this pipe to look nice. So I'm gonna be spraying it with that six in one lube and drying it off as we go. So it stays nice looking with this factory look on here. I'm also gonna be blowing off the seat. That's really important. Blow that off, dry it off. Make sure you have all your tape off after your uh, washing. So after I've done that, now I'm gonna start with the lube and I'll hit the foot pegs, the chain, I'm gonna spray that chain and get that six in one lube on there so that it coats that and dissipates any water that's still left on the chain. Now at this point, we're for the most part a little done. I'll go around with a lube. I like to spray under the fenders and air box with that lube. That'll get it to soak in a little bit and be slippery for when you uh, uh, ride again, but it also helps that air box gets a little dry so I like to spray those areas and under the front fender and then wipe them down a little bit. Some people will use like a slippery smell good uh, spray. I prefer just a lube under the fenders, works really well. At this point, now it becomes about checking for maintenance items. So as you can see, I like to make little notes on the rear fender and I'll write down anything that needs to be done. And I like to do that straight away. So one of the first things I'll do is check the spokes and chain. You know, those are the rolling things. So as I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna check those things. If anything needs to be done on those that I don't have time to do, I'm gonna write them on my list so that I can do them later. And then I'm gonna look at my chart and look, like most bikes you can peek in and see your air filter in some way. And if it's time to do an air filter. So I'll add that to my list, as well as is it due for an oil change? I'll look at my hours and determine if it needs an oil change yet. I wanna keep track of those. So as I'm done riding, the main keys is I wanted to keep track of what work I need to do next before I ride next and keep track of that or accomplish it all right then so it's ready to go for the next day. Hopefully you're riding the next day or the next time you get a ride. As you're blowing out and going around the frame with the compressed air, especially on four strokes, electronics is really a common thing to go out on bikes. So you wanna be spraying up in here under the tank, getting to the electronics, the throttle body where all the plugs are Anywhere you see electronic plugs, you're blowing out and you're shooting all those areas. You're not just blowing aimlessly. The plastic really doesn't matter that much. It's really about drying off the metal parts and the electronics when you're drying off the bike with the compressed air. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. Bike washing is really important. It's not just uh, to look good, but it's a part of a whole maintenance program for your bike. Um, you wanna stay on a good routine of washing your bike because you're not just washing it to look good, but you're looking for things that are wrong. You're gonna notice if there's a blown fork seal, if there's a leak somewhere, if you see a leak or you got a missing bolt. When you have that bike laid over on both sides, you're looking for that as you're washing. And you're, hopefully you're making those notes down and keeping track of the stuff you, you need to do. So. Again, if you don't have time to wash it properly, blow it off and dry it off and lube it, you might be better off to wait to the next day. So you wanna to try to prevent getting additional water in areas and things like that to cause more damage than good. So hopefully that helps you out. You can check out our other videos, tech videos that'll help you here on Elevate. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. If you're looking for anything dirt bike related, parts, gear, anything like that, head over to our website or the link in the description below and click on the Rocky Mountain link. From there, you'll be able to see all of our top picks and much more. It's a great place to find all the dirt bike parts that you need.